Hi. For formality's sake, I'm Lauren Lola. I'll be hey. only half a nerd to color today. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Um, yeah, I don't know about anyone else, but I literally gasped when I saw Morgan Elspeth in the trailer. Me too. Um, yeah, not only I'm like, wow, we're going to learn more about her, but it's also the first time we're seeing her in animation. So I wanted to talk about that. Can you talk about the process of uh, taking your performances, Morgan, which up until this point, we've only seen live action and then translating it into a voice performance? Yeah, it's so it's, it's it really is interesting. Live action, now animation, which um, I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, you know, the approach overall wasn't that much different compared to being in a set other than I'm not in the volume I'm just in this recording booth but in my my actor's mind I am still you know making the same kind of choices I would on a set I'm getting notes from Dave Filoni who's you know we're um we're approaching the lines at, you know with different kinds of choices and so for me um I was I just I would do the same breathing, same physicalities on the side, just to prep me for whatever was happening in the, in the moment of the scene. So I don't find it that much different, to be honest with you, other than I'm in much more comfortable clothing. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And yeah. And just from like, obviously I'm not going to say what happens, but like just from the scenes I've seen, I can, I, I definitely understand what you mean by that. Yeah. <laughs> in recording for Morgan, um, is there anything about her that you learned that, surprise you at all in any way what I love just finally I really was truly getting confirmation of her history uh because I didn't know completely if she was there to witness the events with Grievous that was mm -hmm. yes yeah. so for me um it was nice to be able to really get that confirmation that she was there on those that that day uh during those terrible events but what I really love about the show is you're going to also see that she also had a softer side to her in the sense that she was very connected to her fellow, you know, uh, Daphimurians, her fellow Night Sisters. And so that's the beauty that I love about Morgan and particularly her relationship with her mother and that mm -hmm. her lawyer. I mean, all of that is just fascinating how they all, you know, uh, group together to try to protect each other. And even though we know inevitably what happens on that on that fateful day, I just love that emotionally we get to explore this kind of content of of emotions coming out of Morgan. And that is love, you know, her her love for her culture. And that's what I loved. Yeah, you definitely see that come across in her arc and even though it doesn't validate what she does later on, like you understand the place that she's coming from with some of what she decides. Absolutely. And then you understand the anger that she holds on to, because that is in some ways her armor. She considers that her strength, right? Because, you know, she'll never forget. She won't forget. And she'll make sure that in every way she can fulfill the destiny of hopefully returning Dathomir to where it was and particularly the Night Sisters. That which inevitably we see. I just love that this is basically like a prequel. It's a prequel mm -hmm. to Morgan Elspeth before Mando Lorraine on season two, the Jedi episode, and before Ahsoka. So this is the the wonderful beauty of what Dave Filoni and team have done. Definitely, yeah. Well, Diana, it's always lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time, and may the Thank force be with you. Force be with you too. <laughs> have fun celebrating. <laughs> Meredith, I'm Lauren Lola. I'm representing the Nerds of Color. Uh, thank you for your time today. I'm so excited to talk to you about Tales of the Empire. Thank so, you for having me. Yeah. So um, 11 years. That's how long it was when we saw Barris betray the Jedi Order and be arrested. And ever since then, fans have been wondering what the heck happened afterwards. And so, I've always I not known what to tell them until... <laughs> I got the call from Dave saying, you're coming back as Barris. I'm like, ooh, what's her story now? I was equally a fan, equally uh, as curious to know where she goes because she was really left once she was imprisoned. Um, she was really left with, is she falling to the dark side? Is she, what, what are her thoughts? What are her feelings? And Dave sort of put this character together with so much depth with so many choices ahead of her um, that she had to be able to choose what is her destiny? What, what is there for you to choose in your life? And I think Barris was 
incredibly conflicted with how she behaved when we last saw her Mm -hmm. and who she is now and what she wants to do with her life, how she wants to be. Yeah. I mean, even if you haven't had a chance to watch it, like you could tell from the trailers that there's a bit of conflict there. So it's fascinating to see like, you know, the journey that she goes on. Um, And I'm curious and recording for Barris uh, this time around, is there something about her without giving anything away, of course, that maybe surprised you at all in any way? You know, interestingly, I really believe she has a very deep sense of morality. I think she has an intense desire within her to do what's right. I think there's a lot of guilt that she's left with, but now she's in a position where she's presented with an offer to join the Inquisitors. um, And she has conflicting feelings about that. And then she has a very intense arc during this show. So how you find her at the beginning, you know, it, her personality adjusts to her surroundings. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think she's still, she knows who she is. She's strong. She's a fighter. I mean, you know, she's force sensitive. She is, she has, she has been trained by the Jedi in the ancient Jedi text. She's, you know, there's a nobility to her. She, so she has a big choice to make and, a lot of conflict to deal with. Yeah, indeed. Um, final question that I have for you is, what do you hope for audiences to take away from watching her arc? Maybe not necessarily a message, but a feeling, if anything. I think people need to, um, in life, be committed to who you are. Be committed to knowing what your values are. Um personally as Meredith, you know, do the right thing. (laughs) But um, I think it shows audience members that there's always a choice ahead of them. And that's, what's the most important that they need to know. Like you have a choice to choose your path. Your destiny is determined by the things you do. Um, And I think that's what the tales of the empire shows. Yeah. It's definitely evident in Barris's arc and it's evident in a bunch of arcs for Mm -hmm. a bunch of characters in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Um, But the fact that we're seeing this from a character we haven't seen or heard from in so long just really drives the point. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Those are all the questions I have for you, Meredith. Thank Thank you so much for your time and may the force be with you. May the force be with you and may the fourth be with you. Yes. May may the the show comes out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Directors, comments and the lectures. Fanboys, professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you. Talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard not like comics, movies, and